Hey property management entrepreneur, I just hung up on my consult with my online psychic and she was consulting me on where the industry is going. Would you like to know where the property management industry is going? Okay, well, I'm not exactly the kind of person who would hire a psychic, especially not one online, although I would be able to read the reviews and that would be helpful. But in reality, I actually don't think there is one future to be predicted. I think that the only thing the future is, is a blank canvas waiting for us to make it our own. We all know the Steve Jobs quote, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. And I think that's what we're here to do. So I do wanna talk about where I think the industry is going because even though Miss Cleo was not available and I could not speak, reach her in her cell and have an online consultation, I do think I have some insight into where the industry is going. And that's what I wanna talk about today. Because if we know where the industry is going based on trends and based on macro patterns, then we can carve out our own future within that. And that's really what I wanna talk about today. So. I'm gonna show you that I think that there is this undeniable pattern in every industry that I've watched and been a part of. This same pattern of maturity has happened in every single industry. This is basically what it looks like with some really broad strokes, zooming way out, way oversimplifying it. You know, 20 years ago, there were very few full-time professional property management companies in the US. In fact, it was usually some back office at a real estate company and somebody was just kind of doing it. It was just a service offered by a different type of company. It was really auxiliary, if that makes sense. And then over time, 2008 happened, 2007, I should say, 2006, and all of a sudden people needed their properties managed. And then we had all these other trends that were happening from you know international people coming over and talking about real estate investing. We had Rich Dad, Poor Dad. We had HGTV, we had all these things happening. And so we really introduced the development of this industry. If you were the only game in town, all you had to do is basically put up your shingle, which is akin to putting up a website, being found in Google Maps, and you would get business. And then of course we started to grow. We started to get mature. You're watching all the things happen before your eyes. If you've been to any of our webinars, if you are involved with Profit Coach or Lead Simple at all, if you go to any of NARPM events, you're just watching this industry grow like crazy. Now, at some point, as the market size continues to grow, it will peak at some point, but we're nowhere near there yet. We're still on the way up with growth. But what's interesting is you see the total revenue grow over time. What's interesting is at some point, the number of firms keep up. So, you know, if, if a typical firm is managing 100 doors or 500 doors, well, then as you 10 and 100x 100 doors or 500 doors, you 10 and 100x the number of firms. But at some point, the economies of scale start to change and fewer and fewer of those firms start to take more and more of the business. And there's going to be a fragmented uh, distribution of who is managing that business. So you're going to have the 50,000 and 100,000 door companies at the same time as you're going to have 2,000 and 5,000 door companies. They're going to be serving a different client, which we're going to talk about in just a second. And they're going to be operating under a different business model. But what we're seeing as we move into the shakeout of any industry is we're going to stop getting a participation trophy for just being in the business and things are going to get more competitive. So this is just something I really want you to realize is coming and we're not there yet, but the shakeout will happen and that will be coming. And this will be accelerated like all industries right now by the speed of technology, by the speed of information, because we're an online society and because information travels so fast, optimization is also happening just as quickly. So we need to keep that in mind. So even though I'm looking at this chart right now, and I'm saying, okay, we're nowhere near the shakeout. The thing is, is the shakeout might not be five years away. It might be much sooner than that. And so we can use these principles to actually fast forward our own businesses and take advantage of them. And so what that brings me to is differentiation. So we're hosting this webinar called Differentiator Die. It's a big part of what we've been teaching all of our clients. It's a huge strategy that we've seen many of our clients have immense success with when they fully adopt it. And I wanna show you what that means. If I pop over and I look at an industry report from NARPM, this was from the national convention last year, 65% of respondents said that local market expertise was huge. Fantastic, we've been talking about that all the time. This is why we think it's actually a defensive and offensive position to be focused and specialized in local markets versus trying to do this from a tech standpoint, you know, from afar with no local boots on the ground. Then you go around from there, you know, over half say that reporting and transparency is important, I'm not shocked at all. And then you might look on the top right here, regulatory expertise, interesting, maybe you haven't thought about that, or maybe that's just, you know, in your DNA and that's what you do. 
And then you look at the very bottom of the right side, only 15% uh, were looking for investment expertise. So you might look at this and say, well, I'm no fool, Jeremy. My best business strategy is to make sure that I'm really focused on the biggest number, which is local market expertise. That's where I really need to grow my business on. But let me invite you to think a little bit differently about that. So my guess is, is that you don't have you know, all of the people who you could be working with in your market. And so if you start to op optimize for local market expertise, and that's something that's actually in your DNA, well, it's fantastic. You're probably going to get more clients than you would have if you didn't invest in that. But if everyone in your market just completely rallies around the battle cry of local market expertise, you're actually going to dilute that message and that will no longer be a unique selling proposition. It will just basically be like salt and pepper at a restaurant table stakes. Like it's not really a differentiating factor. It's just what everybody's talking about. So to use an extreme contrast to that, let's look at investment expertise. Now you might say, well, why focus on that? Only 15% said that that's what they cared about. But if you were absolutely the best at investment expertise and you combine that with investment expertise in your local market with local market knowledge, now that 15% of people that responded may actually double or triple or quadruple the size of your clientele because you're not doing business with all those people yet. And like I said, there is no future to predict. There's only the future that we create. And so if we go to the marketplace and we take that message out there and we actually educate in an inspiring way, we may actually completely change the next survey that we get back from the marketplace. So two years from now, investment expertise and specifically investment expertise within my local market could completely go to the top if you actually go out there and you create that future and you use that as a position to grow your marketplace. We all love data, especially when the data is coming from the customer. We want that information, but we also have to be aware that if we just send out a survey with a limited number of checkboxes, the results and the discovery that we are going to receive or that is going to be available to us is actually going to be limit, uh, limited to those checkboxes and to that very finite scope. So I love the Henry Ford quote that we've all heard and we have no idea if he actually said it. Could have been Abraham Lincoln or Oprah, which 99% of quotes online are attributed to them. But let's just assume that Henry Ford said this because it makes a lot of sense. If I had asked people what they wanted, they would have told me faster horses. And so it's up to us to have the vision for the marketplace. Often our clients don't know what they want because they don't know what's possible because nobody's shown up with the right vision to create something they've never done before. I think that we can even experience that in our industry. When we see what some amazing vendors do, like a property meld and a second nature and a lead simple, and I dare I say it, even a rent scale, uh, our clients were not asking for these things because they didn't know that they were actually available. And I think that that exact same parallel is available to you as a property manager in your market. And we're going to show you exactly how to take advantage of that. So jumping back into a couple more stats, I just want to show you two different companies in the same market, in this case, Denver, are basically competing with each other but they're just doing it from a different position and they're both growing rapidly. Both of these clients of ours are growing at a very fast clip. So client number one, I'm um, sorry, of ours that's focused on their positioning in their market says, we help homeowners become successful landlords by renting properties faster to better tenants that stay in our properties longer. Now, who are they serving? Homeowners, what are they helping them do? What's the problem they're trying to help them solve? Become successful landlords. How are they doing that? It's pretty obvious. Same market, you could say, okay, well, how do we compete with those guys? And so second client says, we focus on growth-minded investors who have property in the Denver area. Who are they focused on? Growth-minded investors with property in the Denver area. Our clients partner with us to free up their brain space, time, and creativity so that they can focus on bigger goals. Now, how is it possible that if we're playing a competition game and there's one best property manager and it's all about getting the best reviews and having the best pricing model and providing the best service and that's the only way to grow, how is it that two people are carving out a niche in the same marketplace that, by the way, has competitive pressures coming from all sides, dozens of professional property managers that you know that offer a great service that are NARPA members? There's really three ways to differentiate your company at a really high level based on product features 
And so you might talk about your technology that you have, um, the features of your service, how you do business, the policies, the practices, and of course your pricing, which we all get really wrapped up in a very energetic debate around. We can talk about our business execution, how we offer our services, the guarantees that we have, how we communicate, the performance that we have, especially if we can guarantee that. And of course the product knowledge, which we were talking about a couple minutes ago. And then at the end, we can also differentiate based on our customer specialization. We could know how to help first-time landlords. We could know how to serve experienced landlords. You could actually focus just on helping the institutional investor, the Black Rocks and the much smaller guys that are out there doing this at a high level, or even the unknown people that we don't know their name that are owning and managing hundreds of residential properties all over the country. You know, they only own seven or 17 in your market. They still act as a big business and that's a different customer. So we can focus on being an advisor to a very specific customer journey. We can call that our tribe. We can really start to use the language that they're using. We can start to encourage them the way that Bigger Pockets does. I mean, if you watch what Bigger Pockets does, they've literally created a tribe of people who all have the same goal that are in the same place. That's what you can do with your positioning. And the reason that somebody hires somebody like that is you can help them see around corners, which is a term I like to use here at Renscale all the time. I think any time you're selling something with expertise, the reason that people are really hiring you is to make mistakes faster at a less expense or to avoid them entirely or to get to the same outcome quicker with less expense, with less pain, um, or to basically think bigger and realize that when they actually got to the top of the ladder, A, it was, it was against the right wall, and B, they were actually shooting high enough. I call that seeing around corners. I think that's what we do here at Renscale, and I think that's what you should be doing for your customers as well. So within that, in the webinar, we're gonna walk you through the four opportunities that you can focus on when specializing. We're gonna ask you some serious questions. I'm gonna actually show you which of these are more defensible and more valuable, and which of these are actually easier to get out of the gate with, but are less defensible and might be mitigated or overtaken by a competitor really quickly if you're not innovating at a different level. And that's what we're gonna be talking about. I'm gonna give you case studies. We're gonna bring in other people from the industry that have used this. I'm gonna bring in some of my business expert friends to show you how this works in other industries. And we're gonna have just a whole heck of a lot of work for you guys to do so that you actually leave this workshop with clarity and inspiration around how to position your property management firm. So when the, the future that Miss Cleo was unavailable to predict for me actually becomes a reality, you are not just standing by holding the bag, but you actually have a seat at the table and you've created part of that future. You've carved out your own tribe. You're actually charging the rates you wanna charge, commanding a premium and only attracting ideal fit clients. That's what I think you can do when you have the right positioning. So will you join us on the webinar?